Welcome to Bourbon School. It's just Brian flying solo today, and I'm going to give you my list of bourbons I didn't buy because of YouTube. Coming right up. All right, guys, before we get started, please make sure you like, subscribe, share, and hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another episode of Bourbon School. So about two and a half months ago, it was during dry January, I know that, uh, Myron made a video where he named seven bottles he didn't buy because of YouTube, meaning it were uh, they were not well-reviewed by people that... Uh, he respected on YouTube, you know, whiskey tubers who did reviews of them and such. And uh, he ended up challenging the rest of the whiskey six to do the same, to make their own. And it's been a while, but I figured right now is a perfect time because Lauren's been away. She's in London and hopefully coming back next week. But this is a perfect time to sit down and do it. And uh, the producer really wouldn't sit down on this one because I really am the major bourbon buyer in the house. She is, certainly enjoys it and we drink it together. But as far as buying the bottles, I would say I'm the major buyer. So this is probably a, a list I'm better suited to give. So um, I ended up doing five. Um, and I don't, well, I don't think they're terribly controversial. Some people might think they are my first one and I don't have any of these. So I'll put them right up here on the little table. Um, my first one is Weller special reserve. So this is not me being a Buffalo trace hater. If you've watched our last couple of videos where we blinded Buffalo trace, it's actually done really well. And we've kind of come to respect it a little more. But Weller Special Reserve is just one that has never interested me. Nobody on YouTube really talks real highly of this one. Um, actually, I went back and I watched the, my bourbon or those bourbon guys. They said nothing interesting at all. And they could think of a bunch of others they'd rather have around to sip on. Um, and to me, it's just another budget bourbon. I know it's hard to find and I know people go crazy for Weller, but it's a $25 bottle of bourbon and it's, I'm generally underwhelmed by Weller anyway. I, neither one of us were really big fans of Weller 12. The antique 107 is good. I will tell you that, but that's almost impossible to find. Um, the one that I see most often in the stores is the special reserve and there's just nothing about it that excites me or makes me want to buy it, especially because it is a $25 bottle and it's selling for 50 and $60 in some places. The other thing that goes along with this is Troy and Laura from Baker drinks did a great video a few weeks back about why are we buying all this budget bourbon when it really isn't exciting. And so this is kind of a new one for me. Like I'm not buying a lot of budget bourbon anymore. Uh, so Weller Special Reserve just it wouldn't it wouldn't hit for me um, on that on that regard either. So uh, Weller Special Reserve is my first one on the list. So number two on my list is Castle and Key, and I've got to say that a lot of this is based on some older reviews of like the batch one that I saw kind of around the same time that we all started this thing here at Bourbon School. I remember when batch one came out, Matt Porter at ADHD Whiskey, Bourbon Pursuit, and the Bourbon Junkies all did not like it at all. And I think for me, that has kind of stuck with me. And so Castle and Key has been one that to me, it's like, oh, it's a cool bottle. And, you know, it's got a cool name and a cool story being at the old Taylor uh, distillery and all. But I just, those first impressions that I heard from pretty big YouTubers that I had some respect for their opinion, uh, just told me Castle and Key is probably not a buy. Now, I will say, I have heard a lot of newer reviews of, I believe it's batch five is out now, or the most recent batch, and people have had more complimentary things to say about it. So it could be one I would try, but I, I would think at this point with that negative kind of reviews that I was exposed to at the beginning of all this, I would say that's probably one that uh, I would want to try before I buy for sure. Okay, number three, and this is not to be a Buffalo Trace hater, I promise, but Traveler. Uh, Traveler Whiskey was one. It's a celebrity whiskey. It's a collaboration between Buffalo Trace and Chris Stapleton, the country music singer, who happens to not be a drinker at all. Um, and that, you know, right off the bat seems like a weird combo. Uh, but then the reviews, I saw the YouTubers come out and just were so 
overwhelmingly underwhelmed with Traveler Whiskey and with what it was bringing to the table. And I mean, it started at $40 and, I, you know, it was one of those things. People were so lukewarm on it. They were like, yeah, you could try it for 40 bucks. And and I've seen people posting, I, I believe it was either on TikTok or maybe on one of my Facebook groups, but um, somebody had just posted it was on clearance at a grocery store and it was marked down to, I, I want to say 20 or $25. So um, Traveler was one that like, you know, I, we're not huge on Buffalo Trace and, and bad Buffalo Trace just wouldn't really fit the bill for us. So um, that kind of lukewarm response that Traveler got on YouTube from some people I respect kind of made it one that I wasn't going to buy. Next one up is Garrison Brothers and Texas whiskey is always very divisive, um, but I have had some good ones. I've got some still Austin right back here that I absolutely love. The Rebecca Creek uh, Spanish Oak is delicious, even though that's MGP that's still finished in Texas and, and get some age in Texas. So there are some Texas whiskeys that I've enjoyed. Um, but I have had this one really is from my YouTube friends people that I'm closer with that I've just in conversation have talked about um, their dislike of Garrison Brothers. A few of my Whiskey Six friends are pretty low on it. And uh, that has kind of really resonated with me. Uh, and also the fact that, I mean, the small batch, it starts at $89 um, for what I get the sense is probably their most basic offering. That means if I want something that might be a little bit better from Garrison Brothers, I'm well over $100, which we don't do here. I saw the Cowboy Bourbon, and actually that one got a lot of really good reviews, but it's $250 a bottle. So um, I really don't see Garrison Brothers uh, being part of my shelf back here. And a lot of that is because there's quite a few of my YouTube friends that have kind of told me it's it's not really great and it's a pass. So I'm going to pass on that one. Lastly, and this one, I don't know if this will be controversial or not. I, I, I really have like from viewers, people in our Facebook community and, and just people you talk bourbon with. It's not like this is like an overwhelmingly like everybody's like, wow, you have to have this bottle. But it's one that because of some of the things I've heard on YouTube, I probably will not go by. And, and price also plays a part in this. Uh, it's the Henry McKenna 10 year. And I know this isn't like a, a, a really allocated bottle or, or something crazy, but it is something that from my understanding has really increased in price as it increased in rarity. And um, I've had mixed reviews on YouTube about how good it really is. And my biggest problem with it is, is from what people say here on Whiskey Tube. It used to be a very affordable bottle, $45, maybe $50. And when we started in this game about a year and a half ago, it was slowly creeping up. And now I see it anywhere from between $69 to $99. And in the end, it's a 10-year bottled in bond um, that used to be 50 bucks to, to justify doubling it in price just because uh, it became hard to find suddenly. I'm not really, I'm not in support of that. And I've never heard anybody say it's one you got to go get no matter what the price. If you find it, go get it. We've got a couple stores around here who now have it on the shelf more regularly, but it's still $69. And I'm probably not going to do that just because there's nobody that I've seen that is so overwhelmingly positive on it. I mean, we've had Heaven Hill bottled in bond and it's been beaten in blinds by J.W. Dant and Evan Williams. So, I mean, I know it's got three more years on it, uh, but I just don't feel like, especially at the inflated price point it's at right now, I'm going to go for it. So there you have it, guys. That's my list of bottles I haven't bought because of YouTube. And I want the rest of my Whiskey Six friends, that's Ben and Greg at the Bourbon Note, Bobby from Bad Axe Bourbon, and uh, Sean from Whiskey Wars to go ahead and complete Myron's challenge and make your list of bottles you haven't bought because of YouTube. And guys, if you like this video, please make sure you like, subscribe, share, and hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another episode of Bourbon School. Also, make sure you check out the Whiskey Six. Go to our channel, give it a subscribe. Our next live stream is going to be on April 24th, and it's going to feature Stephen from Tipsy Whiskey Shenanigans. So we'd love to have you all tune in for that. Until then, guys, cheers. Thank you.